Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 805. Okay, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 803 to 805, click on the link below the video. Hey, this trick here, this is um, related to the video Mr. Excel and I did, trick number 83. Now, in that video, it was a much more complicated uh, situation, and so we had power pivot and pivot table. But I want to take an idea from that video and uh, see how to build a formula for this. Now, here's the idea. We have a list uh, of um, class names. And we want to show a name here whenever someone fails a math class. And these are the keywords we want to search for. So we don't have the complete list. Now, we probably could do um, you know, advanced filter, extract unique records, or pivot table to get unique records. But let's just assume that we're not able to do that. And so we really do need to have an approximate match. I need to find the word calculus. So if you look down here, um, let's see, where is it, calculus? or a geometry, right? There's analytic geometry, or could it be geometry? So really, it's like looking for these smaller text strings within these larger text strings. And we have four items. Now, actually, uh, back in 2008, Barry Houdini at the Mr. Excel message board came up with a great solution for this. But I want to show you a couple other, partially that, and a couple other little tricks here. Now, let's just think about this. We can use the search function, search. You give it some text to find within some text. So if I say find calculus, and usually you click on a single cell, this within text is expecting, or in the find text, both are expecting a single cell. If we decide to give it more than one cell, it turns into an array format. Now, I'm not searching just for calculus. I really want all of this. So notice I'm putting in defined text more than one item. Now, if we build our formula like this, there's cells. More than one cell here, which means we're going to have to use the keystroke control shift enter. But in many functions, uh, if you enter them as a, an array constant and not a range of cells, you don't have to use control shift enter. All right, so here it is. I have that. I'm going to hit the F9 key. The cool thing about putting some stuff in cells, highlighting the cells, and if you want to create that array constant using the F9 key, then you don't need to know the syntax. Semicolons means row, and commas mean columns, right? I think I have some notes up here on that. All right, so there it is. We can hard code this in. And now, we are still going to have a problem, but we're not going to have to use Control-Shift-Enter, right? Value. When it finds calculus somewhere here, Right, it'll return the number, but the problem here is it actually is returning an array. It's looking 1, 2, 3, 4, and it will return error values or the position where it finds the subtext string. So if I hit F9, you can see it's returning four items. So no problem. Let's put this because we will ultimately want to find a true or false or something like that. Anytime it finds any one of these, I'm going to use is number. Is number will also return an array. Both. And if I double click and send this down, you can see it gives me a true, but only when it finds calculus, because calculus is the first item in this array here. All right. Now, if we highlight this and hit F9, you can see, oh yeah, it's returning four items. But the or function, remember, we only need one true to get a true in the cell. So if I put or around this, or can deal with this array constant um, and do it perfectly, right? So it's or, what does or do? Or you give it uh, as many logical tests as you want. And if any one of them comes out true, then or yields a true in the cell. So we have four logical tests in, in essence from search and is number. I'm going to enter this and double click and send it down. And now we see we get. Ah, so there's a true for geometry, even though it was the third number. All right, that's still not quite what we want, because I would like to actually ultimately extract a unique list of student names whenever they failed a math class. We got our trues. That was our goal so far in the video. But now, I want to put the name here. Well, we can just use the if. Or returns a true if. It's just going to get one true anytime any four of the items are there. So there's our logical test comma, value of true, I want the name. Otherwise, I want the value if false, I want double quote for blank. Control Enter, and now I can double click and send it down. 
Now, all we want to do is have a unique list. Notice Clayton is listed twice here. All we want is a unique list. I'm just going to do a pivot table. Now, the only trick here is when it sees two, if we drop it into the row labels, it will just list one, but it will actually put one blank, but we'll see how to remove that. I'm going to click there, Control Shift Down Arrow. Whoops. Whoa. Oh, it looks. So the formula didn't copy down all the way. I'm not quite sure why that didn't go down all the way. Glad I checked there. All right, OK, so that's looking good. I better triple check here. Copy this all the way down, OK. All right, so we got our formulas working all the way down. All right, now let's highlight and make our pivot table. I'm going to highlight just this first column, Control Shift Down. All right, that's all the only one we need because we want a unique list. I'm going to insert pivot table, pivot table, or the keyboard shortcut Alt NVT. Better triple check here. OK, looks good to me. I click OK or Enter. All right, I'm going to drag this. Uh, failing math down to row labels, and there we have it. Now notice we have a blank at the top, right? So that's because when you drop something down into the row labels, it gives a unique list, and there is one, at least one blank there. So I'm going to get rid of it with this filter. I right? just check that one and click OK. So that gets us our unique list. So all, these are all a list of the students who have failed math. Now let's go back over here. I'm going to call this PT. Let's go back over here. Now, we saw this formula, and this formula is fine, right? We saw search and this uh, array constant here. But um, there's another way we could do this, too. And actually, I first saw this trick in 2008. Barry Houdini uh, uh, used it with lookup to do a look up multiple items in a single uh, text string. All right, so I'm going to actually, let's copy this. We don't need to recreate this. And instead of using the is number, which is search is calculating on this, this array of items here, but is number is calculating on array two, and so is or. So maybe, I haven't timed these, but maybe a faster way is to use the lookup function. Because the lookup will just do a lookup. Now the lookup value, well, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what that is yet, but the lookup vector, that's this. Now right now, you know, we, we know it's value error. So if I hit F9, there's four value errors. But further down, we'll get a number. We're only going to get a one number in any one of these positions at any time. I'm going to Control Z. So I'm going to look up a number. Now, I need to find uh, the, the, the last number in this array. And so I'm going to use the, a big number. Now, the big number I'm going to use is the maximum number of characters allowed in a cell. So I'm going to use 2 caret 15. Now, you could use any big number. You know, I mean, if the longest text string you're going to ever have is 100, use 100. Now, 2 to 15, why 2 to 15? Well, 2 to the 15 minus 1 is the maximum number of characters allowed in cell. So this big number will cover any particular number that the search function can spit out. All right, now watch this. We'll copy Number this down. I'm going to double click and copy it down. I hope it went all the way down. And there we have it. So the 10, that was this G right there. The 1, that's because it found geometry. And the 5, because it found the A right in algebra right there. Now let's just step through this one right here. Now what in the world is lookup doing? Well, remember, search is returning an array, F9, right? That's the lookup vector. So what does it do? Lookup takes 2 to the 15, and it looks up. And then when it finds a number, it returns it, right? So it's just a clever way of getting that number, which is the position it found, the match, the geometry, out of this array, right? Because the problem we had before is it was a bunch of values, and we only wanted the number, right? So I'm going to click Escape. So to look it up, it returns the 10. Now around this, we need our if. And notice this is just doing a lookup, right, instead of um, earlier than we had to do is number. But it is. This is now not returning four numbers, but a single error or a single number. So I'm going to choose, just to switch it up, I'm going to say find the is an A. Now what this is going to do is it's going to give us a true when we it finds the uh, N A and a false, which is uh, finds the number. And that's what we want. So when we do our if, we're going to do it in reverse. Remember, it's a logical test, and it's one of two things. 
if always puts one of two things in the cell. Now, the thing we are interested in is the false. So when we go comma and get the true, I'm going to put the double quote here. And then comma, the false, is going to be over here. That's different than what we did over in this column where the true was the name. All right, but this works just as fine. And this might calculate a little bit faster because we have fewer arrays to calculate through. All right, I'm going to double click and send this down. So there we have it. All right, so the actual cell, the blank over here was the value of false, and the value of true was uh, the actual name, and here it was the reverse. All right, so we saw some cool things about search, how to take, um, Actually, one other thing about lookup here is you know how we hard coded this in because we wanted to avoid Control Shift Enter? Well, actually, with lookup, lookup specifically can handle arrays. So we actually can do it either way, the, the cells or the uh, array constant. Now, originally what we said is, hey, we're always looking up for the same word, so why not just hard code it in? Then we don't have to worry about what happens over here. But I'm going to just enter it, no curly brackets from Control Shift, Enter, and copy it down, and it works just fine. All right, so we saw a little bit about looking up multiple items in a single text string, uh, how to use the if, the is na, the is number, and also how to do the pivot table to extract a unique list. All right, see you next video.